For those that have been living under a rock, basically every single movie that you see that's American made has this whole depiction of, uh, of Christmas where there's this big fat Santa Claus guy that comes down the chimney, he gives you a present. Everybody knows the story, we don't have to go over it. But in Bavaria, it's a little different. So talk to me about your childhood. What? I know exactly what you want to hear. I know, yeah. You know what I want to hear. You know what I want to hear. I am Daniel, this is DTV, welcome back to the channel. I am very excited today because we have a visitor. Miss Fran is here of Soldiers and Sauerkraut, and today we're gonna to be talking about Bavarian Christmas traditions. So from an American perspective, living over here in Germany, uh, I've been hearing a lot of different stories from Fran about her childhood and how she grew up, um, and it is completely different in, with regards to Christmas and it's completely different than the way I grew up uh, with Christmas. Where's the Where's the you gotta be kidding, Santa Claus birthday! So I thought it'd be helpful to sit down with somebody who's local and learn some things uh, as an American living over here and see how it kind of differs from the American way of how we know Christmas. So without further ado, let's get into it, yeah? First of all, let's get into some really easy stuff. Like, okay. um, what is Soldiers and Sauerkraut? Like, you guys are brand new. I saw you probably, I don't know, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I was super interested. You guys had really great local content. So just give me an idea of what that is all about. Actually, what we're trying to do is be like a guide, a local guide for people who come here, who are not from here, but want to know where do I get great pizza? Where do I get a good haircut? Where can I go out like to have some decent or amazing drinks? Okay. And I think it's a difference. If you live here, grew up here and see how everything developed, or if you come here as an American, maybe live here for a year and then tell people what to do. Okay, got it. So you're giving us like the local perspective on like great places to eat, mm -hmm. great things to do, um, traditional stuff as a Bavarian. Yeah. And you're tailoring that specifically to Americans that are living over here, right? Yeah. Okay. It's also important to me to like show them some stuff about my customs or our customs, about mm -hmm. our traditions. I know that Americans are interested in that, but maybe they don't know anyone who tells them how this works, why we do it, and that we don't necessarily wear dental every No, day. you are so right, because I there is no news agency out there right now that I know of that gives us like local Bavarian news or like customs yeah. and courtesies like in English. Like I don't know where to go to find that information. Um, and so it is really helpful that you guys are creating fun ways to learn about local customs, courtesies, and traditions and stuff in Bavaria. Speaking of which, what do we have here? It looks like some local yeah. things, yeah? So I gotta admit, they're pretty new. Um, it's like speculatios, but like Oreos. Okay. Speculus, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those Speculos, are... Speculos, yeah? Speculos, yeah. Speculos, yeah. I may be saying it wrong. I don't know. Those are Lebkuchen, and this is Baumkuchen. Okay, so Lebkuchen I've heard of many times. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but this is like, you tell me, I don't know if I'm, this is right or not, but like this is one of the most traditional type of yeah. holiday cookie, or I is it like all year round? It's a holiday cookie, definitely. Like you get the best ones in Nuremberg, actually. Can I eat this one or did you chew off this one earlier? I chew off this one. Too. <laughs> you gotta take this one. Okay, I'll take this one, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You gotta like ginger, I think. Yeah, lots of ginger, it's lots a, of it's spices. A, it's a punch of ginger in your mouth, <laughs> which I can appreciate a little bit, but it's not like anything that you would expect when you eat a cookie. It has a very specific texture, I wanna say. There are lots of nuts in there, like mm -hmm. almonds, and you have different glazes, chocolate or just like sugar glaze. Mm -hmm. I prefer the chocolate ones. And what is this one? Um, this is also Lipku, cool. they just didn't put a glaze on it, and Cheers. I prefer it with glaze. It makes a bit like, I like chocolate, so mm -hmm. that's why. Okay. As I said, you get the best ones actually in Nuremberg, 
they're I'm just gonna keep eating if that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> they're rather big actually. They're definitely like this size and they're very moist and they're famous all over. Like they have a specific recipe for this and they're only allowed to make them there. You can order them online or if you take the train to Nuremberg, get them right there. They are amazing. Okay. What about locally here? Like within 30 minutes of base, where would you say the best place to get a Liebkuchen is? Um, you can definitely get them in Weiden because they have a little Liebkuchen house at the market square right mm. now. It looks pretty cute. So like perfect for pictures, also perfect for Liebkuchen. Um, I gotta admit, I got those at the Edeka. So you can also get them at every grocery store that you have. They have the cheaper versions. Okay. They are okay-ish, but the more expensive versions, I would recommend getting them because they are way better. The more expensive ones? Yeah. And those are at like in the, in the markets, right? Or are they at Etika as well? They're at Etika as well. The more expensive ones are? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then obviously, Glühwein. Yeah. Everybody knows about Glühwein around here. Um, this is also another very traditional drink to have mm -hmm. during the holidays. It's basically hot wine, right? It is, yeah, but we do put some spices in there, but you can buy it ready in a bottle actually. So you just heat it up in your pot, maybe throw in some oranges to make it a bit more juicy or yeah. have some sweetness in there. A little more flavor. Yeah, okay. and then you're ready to go actually. Yeah, we're going to be drinking that all night tonight. So um, that's <laughs> going to keep our bellies nice and warm, right? Oh. Pros? All right. Are you already empty? I'm already empty. I'm do you want another one? I do. Are there any other little snacks or drinks that we're missing? I'd say those are the most popular ones that you get at every Christmas market. Since everything is getting more global, like we have stuff at the Christmas markets, maybe from Czech or from Poland or whatever, just because it tastes good. So is the Glühwein from like Czech, like when I go to a Czech Christmas market, is that going to be a little bit different than the, than the Glühwein that I have in Germany? Is that basically the same thing? It's basically the same thing. Okay. Like they might taste a bit different because they have different flavors, of course. They have a blueberry, sometimes they have a strawberry Glühwein. It's different. They okay. come up with different stuff because you got to bring something up yeah. for every year, yeah. basically. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because I remember going to uh, several other countries during the holidays mm -hmm. here and they had different flavors and they had different types and stuff. I didn't know if it was the exact, exact same or not. But. Mostly it's hot wine, different flavor, makes you tipsy, perfect. Yeah, it makes you tipsy and it's like the perfect drink to have, especially when, like, when it's cold outside yeah. and you need something warm in your belly and at the totally. same time it gives you that little kick. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about advent calendars. Mm -hmm. Now, I just now started getting onto the advent calendar game like a couple years ago. I'm sure that it was something big in the States um, when I was younger, I just didn't really know about it too mm -hmm. much, but my wife is really into it, right? So um, that's not a like a Ger Bavarian German thing, right? That's like globally, everyone does the advent calendars. Is that correct? I'm not 100% sure because every now and then when I tell people from different countries, hey, do you have an advent calendar? They either have never heard about it and they're like, yeah, sure, I have one. Yeah. I think it's still typically German and it's the best tradition I think there is also for Christmas. Like it makes the waiting time so much better because you can get up in the morning like, okay, I can open the new door of my advent yes, calendar. Yes, yes, And you get super excited about it. You get a gift this. every single day. Yeah. And they're getting like really uh, creative with these advent calendars. Absolutely, advent calendars. We absolutely. Have, we have now a wine advent calendar that my, my wife opens up every, every night. We have, um, I've got a beer one it's from different beers in Germany. So it's like all the different days you have different beers that I can, I can try. My dog has a dog treat one that he That's opens cute. up every single year uh, or every single day. And you just went to um, that plant store, right? Yeah. There was a plant. Tell me what happened with the plant store and the advent calendar thing. So basically, I feel like almost every Instagram account has a little like advent calendar. They do an online. Yeah. But uh, the plant store is basically pretty new. Like they're like maybe for a year or so. Okay. And every day they post like a new plant or an accessory for a plant or maybe a gift card or something that you can win. So everything you have to do is just like the picture, follow them, then post two of your friend's name on this and then you're in. Okay, and then basically they're giving you, they give you a chance to win what, which is one of their plants or something? Yeah. It's either a different plant for every day of the advent or every day until the 24th, or it's like a gift card. Okay. So it's always a little surprise, either, as I said, the gift card or the plant. So like the typical advent calendar, because you never know what's in there behind the door. Right, right. Viden. Mm -hmm. Viden has a kind of a unique uh, tradition that they do with their uh, advent calendar 
um, right in the middle of the city. Um, and I just found out that, found out about this through you. I didn't even know that. I've been living. Oh, I've been living in Biden for six years, and I had no idea. You missed that, out. I had no idea they had an advent calendar in the window. So can you explain what they what do they do for that? So basically, the old town hall is the advent calendar. They have like lots of windows there, and each and every window is one of the doors of the advent calendar. Nice. So right now you can even see like they're still closed, and they have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. And each day is it's corresponding to each number. Basically. So what comes out of these windows when you open them? Like they're that? only little pictures behind them, but it's still nice because normally they have like a little ceremony where someone sings or has like a little mm. poem and it's like very, very cute. It brings you in the mood yeah. with the Christmas market around so you can have your glue by and just look at the windows until they open. So yeah. it gets you in the mood. And do you know what time that they usually open up the, the windows? They open up at 5 p.m. every day. Mm. Okay. Christmas childhood. Oh God. <laughs> Bavarian Christmas childhood. This is gonna get fun. If you're a kid, you shouldn't watch this right now. I'm just gonna spoil it. So, talk to me about your childhood. Like, what? <laughs> I know exactly what you want to hear. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know what I want to hear. You know what I want to hear. Okay, because this is this is big though. This is yeah. this is really big because I think every child's dream is to actually meet Santa Claus. Tell me what the Bavarian, what the traditional Bavarian Christmas is like. What's that all about? So we have like two separate parts basically like there's Christmas for us on the 24th obviously okay and um, yeah we have Nikolaus too okay and Nikolaus is either on the night from the 5th to the 6th or on the 6th of December okay got this it. is when uh, Nikolaus comes to us and to our kids and brings them gifts or maybe puts them in his little bag and no. takes them away. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so yeah. your parents obviously communicate with this person that is St. Nicholas. Yeah. And this person could be an uncle, or he could be um, a friend, yeah. or a cousin, or whatever it is. Dresses up as St. Nicholas. Basically, St. Nicholas looks like Santa Claus, right? Yes and no, because um, historically seen, he's a bishop. He used to be a bishop of Mira, I guess that's how you say it. So he's dressed still like a bishop, like a bishop would be dressed nowadays. Okay. And he will still show up in his traditional clothing, like yeah. with his giant cane in his hand. Yeah. Um, mostly a long white or gray beard. Okay. And uh, with his very big book in his hands. And okay. in this book, he has written down everything what the kids have done this year. Like either if they have been good kids or if they have been bad kids. So a naughty list. A naughty and nice yeah. list. Yeah, right? true. Um, so... About what age does this guy start to come to the house? Is it every single year? It's every single year. Okay, so you look forward to it, like like as a kid, like it from your perspective. like <laughs> It depends how you behave, I think. So when I was younger, I was a year old. My cousin, we were very close. She was already three, so they already brought like the Nicolas to us because my cousin, three-year-old, she already realized what's going on. But since I've been there, like my dad had me on his arm, like uh -huh. I was just like, doing nothing I, I think in this case maybe not even crying yeah. just getting my little gift getting my chocolate and then I sat down again wait was that your first memory of it like do um, you I have pictures oh, I can't okay, really okay. remember what's your first memory of like actually having this guy come over and like read you my first <laughs> memory is actually not a very nice memory oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Were you naughty or something? Is that um, what I, <laughs> I guess I kind of was because he came in there and like as a three-year-old toddler, someone that tall with like a long beard and you don't know that person comes in, yeah. you get scared. Yeah. So I guess I started crying from the moment he walked into the door okay. and uh, I didn't stop until he left. So, oh, so he still gave me his my chocolate and everything and yeah. tried to calm me down. I was still crying, crying, crying. And I sat there on the couch still crying but munching down my chocolate. Okay, so I don't know if, why, if this is like big news for just me or anybody else out there that's American, but essentially what's happening here <laughs> is that a man dressed like more or less Santa Claus shows up at your house, rings the doorbell, he's got the beard, the belly, the, the cane, you know, he's got his, uh, his book, and he reads you everything you've done that's been good and everything that's been, that's been bad that you've yeah. done over the year that your parents are giving to this guy. So you're just showing up as a little kid, looking up at this big guy in a costume and he just knows everything about you. Yeah. So he's like judging you and telling you what you did bad, what you did good. Yeah. Okay, then what happens from there? Like what, 
you hear this from them, you're like, okay, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Do you and give them like, a hug? Do you get a candy? What happens? They're like, are you gonna do better next year? And you're like, yes, yes, I'm gonna do better. Oh yeah. Of and like, course. okay, let me check my bag if I have something for you. And then oh. he's like checking his little bag and like, oh, I got here some chocolate yeah. and some oranges. And then he just gives it to you. Here's an orange. <laughs> yeah, basically like this. And then I'm, I'm like. Thank you. I'm just gonna sit there and be nice again. Then okay. sometimes you sing a song for him or have a poem oh. or you play something on an instrument like okay. to impress him, I think. Yeah. And then he leaves like, hey, see you next year. This is actually very interesting because this is not the only thing, only person that comes up to your door during the holidays mm -hmm. and does a jingle or reads you your fate. They also do this, um, what is it called at the beginning of the year? Uh, the three... Three Kings Day? No, well, I don't know. It's like where they put the thing on top of your. Oh door. yeah, that's Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day. It's yeah. on uh, January sixth, okay. and those are the three kings who used to visit like baby Jesus, okay, uh, and his parents, and brought him gifts, and that's what they do still nowadays, at least in my town and in the smaller towns. Yeah. So they come, they have a little poem, they bring their vital. I don't know what is that. The the that that smoke that they create. Translation. Oh. Incense? Incense. Yeah. Incense. So they bring their incense with you to like get away the bad spirits and the bad ghosts from the last oh. year. So you have positive energy and positive okay, vibes. Okay, so they're bringing, in, they're bringing in positive vibes yeah. for the next year. Exactly. That's kind of cool. I like that. But I don't think um, random strangers are showing up to your house in, in America these days anymore. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I wish that we had like Christmas carolers. I, I didn't have any Christmas carolers when I was in, in America. I grew up in California. I'm sure they do it, you know, mm -hmm. in certain areas, but not just random people that would just, I mean, they're going to every house. Yeah. You know, if you don't want it, then you just say, shoo away. Yeah. But I, I welcome them. Like, I want to hear them singing. I want to see what their little, their little thing is. I want to see. smoke. I want some positive vibes. vibes. I want some Tell positive me. vibes Tell for me. sure. Okay. So. We got St. Nicholas, mm -hmm. and then talk to me about the 24th. 24th December. is actually our Christmas day. That's your Christmas day. Yeah. So this is when our kids and also the adults um, get the gifts. Okay, and um, most families are all together in one house, right? Yeah. That's probably, okay, obviously. So you kind of split it up a bit, like on the 24th, maybe it's your main family, and the 25th you go to one side of the family, and on the ah. 26th, still a holiday for us you go to another family okay it can be exhausting to be honest because you're oh, eating for three days straight you're what you're what you're eating for three days straight. oh like yeah 24 25 26 absolutely yeah it's that, exhausting uh, yeah yeah I, I can imagine for sure um but that's what the holiday is about right totally you put on that winter coat so you gotta, <laughs> you gotta eat all the snacks um okay so you have christmas day on the 24th talk about opening presents yeah is there like a system to that like do you have to do like one kid at a time or does everybody just go at it at once like what is the protocol then what's the in uh, this case etiquette? i'm an only child so it was always uh, all about me mm -hmm. it was just me and my gift so i could open them but in my family the tradition was my dad and my mom actually like put up the christmas tree put the ornaments and the lights on it in the mm -hmm. living room and then they closed the door so i couldn't go in there because they told me, hey, the Christkind's coming. So the who? The Christkind. Who's it? What's, what's, oh, that's the same. That's the person who oh, actually okay. brings our gifts. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the girl with the long locks. Oh, we didn't talk about that kind yet. Kind of an angel. That's on the twenty fourth. Yeah. Okay, we didn't talk about that yet. <laughs> okay, so they actually have somebody that brings gifts. Who? Just yeah, explain that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like an angel woman. Yeah. yeah. That brings the gifts. Yeah. Okay. Weird, I, like I know. <laughs> Not weird. I mean, if you grew up that way, yeah, your whole life, then what would be weird is a fat guy coming down a chimney of every single house in the world. Not judging. That would be weird. <laughs> so they split the job. So she's taking care of you guys. She's taking care of us. Okay, I can appreciate that. She's kind of cute though, too. Yeah, she yeah. is. <laughs> she's, she's cute. I think I'd rather have her flying down and giving us. I think so. Presents than this. So you have the Chris, the Chris, Chris kind. Mm-hmm. And she brings the gifts. Yeah. You're you're a kid. You're supposed to be in another room when that's happening, right? Yeah. So does that mean like your parents say Chris Kind is coming? You need to go in another room, and then like an hour or so later, you come back in the room and there's presents under the tree. Is that how that works? Yeah, basically. So oh, sometimes okay. they just try to distract the kids. Let's say you go on a Christmas walk, or since I was raised Catholic, I went to church, had like my church ceremony over, and mm -hmm. when I came back, like. 
Chris can, can was here. Oh, ah, okay. And um, so I walked into the living room. The tree was already up, like decorated fully, and there were lots of gifts. Nice. And this is what happened while I was at church or while I was with my grandma or whatever. Right, right. And then the Kriskin did the job and actually, ta-da. So, okay, I got some questions then for you. Mm -hmm. Do you guys as a kid have like a, um, a letter that you can send? Yeah. Who do you who do you mark it to? Who do you write it to? The Christkind. To the Christkind. Yeah. So you don't say dear Santa. No. You say Liebes Christkind. Liebes Christkind. <laughs> there's that actually is awesome. There's even an address that you can send letters to to the oh, Christkind, okay. and then the Christkind sends you letters back. Wait, they send you letters back? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who does it. The obviously the Christkind. The Christkind obviously does it. So yeah, you get an yeah. answer from it. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So. Do you do you remember hearing about like the American uh, Christmas story and like our version of it and thinking to yourself like what this is kind of weird? Do you, I guess when I was like, when was the first time you remember like hearing the, a different way? I guess I was like 14, 15 or so when you start like watching American movies more and realizing yeah. what you're watching. Maybe yeah. 13. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, they do it different, but I didn't really care too much about it to be honest. Right. Um, it wasn't exciting, like I'm excited right now about it. No. Like, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more about the Christian. No, it was like, okay, Santa's riding around in a sleigh, cool. So you never heard until you were 13 years old that a fat man flies around in a chimney with reindeer. Maybe, I gotta admit, maybe I've heard about it, but I didn't really care because if he's not gonna bring me gifts, why then, would I Yeah, care? yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So. She does, She just flies with her wings. She's like yeah. an angel. So she flies to other people, people's houses with her mm -hmm. wings. She doesn't use any reindeer no. or unicorns. Woman that power. Would be, that would be awesome if she was in like an actual like sleigh with unicorns. Like white unicorns with the... Okay. No? That would be awesome. <laughs> it's a bit too much. That would be awesome, I think. The absolute terrifying Krampus. Oh, how could I forget about this? What is that all about? Okay, so Krampus... Or Knecht Ubrecht. I looked it up. They're different people. Okay. And they're actually the helper of Santa or Nikolaus. Be the helper? Say. Yeah. Okay. So every time Nikolaus comes, he has his helper with him. Okay. Um, in Bavaria, we usually call him Krampus. Okay. And um, he's a very tall, dark guy, like with lots of fur coats and everything, oh, okay. sometimes a bit dirty in the face because he's working hard, has some chains with him, has some bags with him. Probably the most scary, the scariest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, about. definitely. Like, definitely. Uh, terrifying. If you're a child... Yeah, you, you start crying immediately. Immediately. Yeah. That's the first okay, question. If they, had, if they had the Krumpus people in America, there would be chaos. Like, parents would be going crazy. There'd be protests, chaos. We do not want this character yeah. in our Christmas holiday you know, traditions. It's it, not nice. Oh my god. They're scary. <laughs> yes, they are. They got the horns and like the, they look like goblins. And... Yeah. Okay, so but what is the purpose of them? Or how are they helpers? Like, for here in this era, they just come as helpers. So in case like one of the kids used to be bad, it's like, hey, Krampus, take care of him. Oh, take care of her. Okay. And then the kid's like, no, no, I'm not gonna do it. And so it's kind of like to make the kids act right. Yeah. And um, he usually carries the bag with all the snacks and the goodies for the kids and everything. So that's what he does here in my area and the biggest area. Okay. But also there's the Krampuslauf. Okay. Normally even in Biden. I don't know if you've been last year. Mm, I don't this is so. where actually all the creatures with the horns and the skulls show up. Okay. Like a bunch of them. Like at least a hundred. Yeah. With fire and smoke and everything. Oh. And this is like more of a southern tradition of southern Bavaria. Yeah. And like to scare away bad spirits and everything. Okay. But it gets more and more popular here because it's actually just really fun to look at. Maybe it is. not it's, for it's, kids. It's very but fun for to us. look at. Yeah. Very fun to look at. Yeah. Okay. So we busted out the pictures and they are priceless. I mean, <laughs> I think the pictures are gonna like make the story here, so I really appreciate that. And thank you, mom, for being such a like organized scrapbooker. Like, wow, this is really nice. Okay, well, Fran, thank you for joining the channel. Yeah. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button and follow Fran on Soldiers and Sauerkraut on Instagram and on Facebook, right? Yes. Hopefully we'll get her a YouTube channel. 
real soon. <laughs> uh, but until then, she'll be joining me and we're gonna be giving you guys a lot more local Bavarian information. Yeah, so thank you. You're welcome, I had a great time with you. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. This is, this is empty. <laughs> I'm sweating my ass off. You wanna open that one? Yes. Add a glue vine, so we're gonna get some more.